people talk about air pollution people only talk about outside people talk about stubble burning people talk about um, vehicular emissions they are talking about ambient air pollution they are not talking about indoor air pollution indoor air pollution is sort of dependent on ambient air pollution but that's not the only source so indoor air pollution is the indoor air quality the different chemical and particle pollutants that are inside because of human activities inside as well as the ambient air pollution outside so indoor air pollution is a much 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 bigger problem indoor air pollution is 2 to 5 times higher than outside air pollution and the sources of air pollution are much more diversified and varied than just outdoor air pollution so to understand indoor air quality is it is important what causes bad indoor air quality one of the most important things that causes air quality in homes is cooking so when you cook parathas or when you're cooking um, something that creates a lot of smoke if that smoke is not removed properly or not removed at that very time that is one of the biggest sources of indoor air pollution the second source can be people living or staying inside rooms and not opening windows at all one of the common times when this occurs is when people are sleeping in their bedrooms with their acs on and their windows closed so the more you breathe inside the more oxygen you are consuming and the more carbon dioxide you are giving outside more carbon dioxide is bad for your health in many ways from cardiac issues to lung issues to a virus spread and bacteria spread and that is probably the second most common uh, cause of bad indoor air quality at homes number 3 is the kind of chemicals we use to clean our homes for example phenyl cleaners toilet cleaners and any other chemical that creates a strong smell the smell of bleach the smell of ozone the smell of chlorine they tend to linger in our homes for a very long time and that in my opinion is probably the third biggest cause of indoor air pollution at homes so the first one is very obvious you should open your windows you should breathe as much fresh air now people will say that oh the air outside is so bad why are you making me breathe outdoor air but having said that the most important thing that you need to breathe is oxygen so if you're going to close all those windows close all all everything and sit in an airtight room or an airtight office you are bound to not breathe fresh oxygen so as counterintuitive as it may seem opening windows is important the second part how do i make sure that i am breathing good air so in our office we have shut down everything but we still take fresh air we have ensured that with the right amount of filtration when we breathe the fresh air 95% plus of its particles are removed so to make sure how to do that at your homes you need to understand how many purifiers you are using to exactly understand how frequently i need to change the filters and what is the amount of clean air provided by the purifier so i'll go a little bit deeper into this so when we say uh, you need to change your filters i have seen instances where people are using purifier but the filter is still in the plastic wrapping so it's not clearing the air i have seen instances where people have used purifier but they have not changed its filter for one year or two years and that is horrible because not only is the filter not working but all the pollutants stuck on the filter are now making the air even worse so it is important to keep checking your filter it's important to keep replacing your filter and to make sure what area of the room that filter can cover and to make sure how to understand that you need to look at one technical rating for all purifiers called as CADR clean air delivery rate it means that how much amount of clean air is a purifier providing the higher the cadr 
the better the chances that it is going to cover a larger size room. The lower the CADR, you should keep it probably in the bedroom or in some small room and not for a large room. So some of the simple tips to take care of the air quality at your home with all the tools that are already at your disposal. Technology, I think, plays a very important role in managing any kind of risk. Any technology that is out there helps you manage the risk in a very, very proper way. So the first role that it plays is that it can give you a clear understanding of how the air is behaving in your home. Technology helps in identifying exactly where the pain point is and exactly where you can implement a solution. Solutions have been there for a long time, but does solution A work better than solution B? Only technology can help you understand, benchmark and improve on those things. The second part is that technology can also help you in making sure that you have the right amount of filtration, right? So you can, you want to make sure that I want 90% improvement or if you are in a place where the air quality is even worse, then I need to buy something that improves my air quality by 99%. Or if you are in a different location where you just need to take care of chemical pollution, then there are diff there is a different technology, a different type of filter available to tackle those specific chemical uh, pollutants. So, in, to summarize, one, monitor can be done very well with technology and second, with modern solutions and modern technology, there are specific solutions that can cater to specific pollution problems. The first advice to all viewers would be to first understand where your air quality is. Um, how your air quality is and what is impacting you. So get, get a sensor, get a measurement, get a test for your air quality, understand what is causing harm to your indoor air and, and you know, you will find the solutions on your own. That's, that's absolutely number one. Number two would be that I would say that do not underestimate the issue of air pollution and indoor air quality. I would encourage people to read up more on, the, on indoor air quality and understand that it may be true that they are not personally facing this issue at their homes, but they might be facing this issue in their office, they might be facing this issue at their school, they might be facing this issue at their hospital. So any indoor environment and you spend 95% of your time indoors. So my recommendation would be to not uh, you know, let go of this issue and study this issue in much more depth. So those are the two very important uh, points that I would like to share with my viewers on, on how to keep abreast with the indoor air quality and indoor air pollution.